What's up guys, we are on Blind Pass Beach, just one of the beautiful beaches on the laid back island of Minnesota Key. And in today's video, we're gonna show you around this beach as well as the three other beaches on this island. And we only got one day to do it, so let's get moving. Welcome back to Exploration, where we show you the best of Florida's Gulf Coast, its amazing beaches, and beyond. We're Jamie and Skyler, and today we're taking you with us on one of our most beautiful and relaxing island tours yet. And since every good beach day begins with breakfast and coffee, we're starting this day off right at Magnolia's. Come on in. Having known that Magnolia's is a very popular spot, we weren't surprised to find that we'd have a bit of a wait during this busy brunch time. But Skylar had no problem killing some time at the bar and getting his vegetables in early with a cold Bloody Mary. And after a couple of minutes exploring the beautiful backyard area, our buzzer went off and our outdoor table was ready. So I went with the Beach Bum Latte. It comes with a white chocolate covered graham cracker. It's good. Next up was my brunch entree, which consisted of salmon stuffed with shrimp, scallops, and spinach, wrapped in phyllo dough. And I can assure you, it was just as good as it sounds. I am still stuffed from attempting to eat that giant pizza last night, so I'll just be drinking my breakfast today. Oh, that's delicious. After enjoying our delicious brunch, we had to see more of this beautiful backyard area, which we found to include some nice waterfront seating where you just might spot some dolphins out in the bay. So we are getting ready to leave Magnolia's on the bay and we were planning to be here much earlier, but by the time we rolled in, it was already after 11. Yeah, and if you watched our video from last week, you'd know that yesterday was a pretty rough day. And on top of that, we tried car camping last night in a Walmart parking lot for the first time. <laughs> but actually, that part didn't go too bad, but it wasn't the best night's sleep we've ever had. Yeah, and on top of that, we drove all the way to the beach this morning, only to realize that we left our scooters back in the Walmart parking lot, so we had to go all the way back to get them. But thankfully, they were still there. But by the time we made it back to Magnolia's, it was their busy time, and we had around a 10 minute wait. But in our opinion, it was worth it. Yeah, and that place is on the expensive side, but considering how great the food and drinks are, plus the location right on the water and the atmosphere, we would definitely go back. Now, even though we got a late start today, we're still gonna show you four beaches and hopefully have some time to try some more food and drinks. Our first beach stop took us six and a half miles up Minnesota Key Road to the northernmost of the island's four main beaches. We found this island drive to be one of the most picturesque we've experienced in all of Florida, with stretches of the road offering amazing views of the Gulf of Mexico and other stretches passing under beautiful oak canopies. And before we knew it, we had arrived at Minnesota Beach. By the time we arrived to Minnesota Beach, there wasn't a single cloud in the sky, and we couldn't have been more ready to get out in the sand and to soak up some sun. So we made it to our first beach stop of the day, Minnesota Beach. And from our research, this isn't typically too busy of a beach, but today it was pretty packed. But considering how cool and windy it was yesterday and how perfect of a beach day today is, it shouldn't be a surprise that everyone wants to be at the beach today. While it sure was busy near the main entrance on this beautiful Sunday, we knew that if we walked the beach far enough, we'd eventually escape the crowds. And after about a half mile walk, we found the peaceful stretch of beach we were looking for. If you're enjoying this video so far and want to help our channel grow, be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. So here at Minnesota Beach, the sand is darker. As you can see, there's more black specks than a white specks, which means that it does get hotter. There was actually a hot sand warning at the lifeguard station today, and that's the first time we have seen that. So be sure to keep that in mind as you're planning your beach day. After some time relaxing on the hot sand, we made our way to the water, which at the time of our visit was a cool 76 degrees. If you 
watched our Venice episode, you would know that we ended our day at Casperson Beach. So if you walked north from Manasota Beach a couple of miles, you would eventually reach Casperson Beach. And while we easily could have relaxed on this beach all day, it was time to head back to the main entrance. We got a lot more beaches to cover, so let's go. With beach number one checked off the list, we were excited to see what our next three beach stops had to offer. And after a quick stop to rinse off our feet, we began making our way back to the parking lot. Oh my gosh, so I just noticed that they actually have shark's teeth in the concrete here. Beach number two of the day took us just over three miles to the south, down the scenic Minnesota Key Road. Here you'll find the southernmost Gulf Beach in all of Sarasota County, and a very popular spot among the locals. We made it to our second beach of the day, the Line Pass Beach. Let's go see what this beach looks like. We were immediately impressed by the access trail to this beach, which weaved through the natural Florida landscape before leading to this amazing gulf view. I can already tell the sand here is hot too. <laughs> we made our way out into the hot sun and even hotter sand to scope out the scene on another beautiful beach. And like Minnesota Beach earlier, we opted for a relaxing beachfront walk to a less busy area of the beach. Minnesota Beach. The sand is very similar and it's also just as busy around the main access area. But we didn't have to walk quite as far to have a little space to ourselves. But because it is such a similar beach, Skyler's going to take a quick dip and then we're going to head on to the next one. Unlike Minnesota Beach, we found Blind Pass Beach to have no lifeguard stands, so swimming at this beach is at your own risk. With two beaches down and two more to go, we began making our way southwards to beach number three. But after a few hours in the sun, we were starting to get thirsty. So first, we had a happy hour to hit. And that led us to the sandbar, an extremely popular waterfront tiki bar and grill. We quickly spotted the deal we were looking for, and we made our way to the bar to get in on the action. We soon each had our own tropical drink, which sure hit the spot on a warm floor today. But after spotting a huge plate of nachos across the bar, we decided we needed some of those for ourselves too. Tell them what we got. So we got their nachos with the firecracker chicken. And despite the massive size, we were almost able to finish them. After taking a moment to check out the waterfront stage, it was time to hop on our scooters and head to beach number three. We found the mile-long ride to be relaxing and enjoyable as we encountered very little traffic along the route. And while we found open vehicle parking at this beach to be quite limited, we had no issues finding a spot for our scooters. Thank goodness accessing this state park was much easier than the one we visited yesterday on Don Pedro. We're also hoping it won't be nearly as windy. But before we could enter this park, we had to pay the $2 per person entrance fee. Now if you had a vehicle, you would put this on your car, but since we're here via scooter, we'll just keep it with us. So from the main entrance of this state park, you can hike 1.3 miles to get to Stump Pass. Last week, we were on the far north end of Don Pedro Island on the south side of Stump Pass. Now that was quite a day that did not go as planned, but if you want to see that experience, check out that video next. But for now, let's go check out our third beach of the day. We were immediately impressed with the boardwalk path at Stump Pass State Park, which is handicap accessible and provides easy access to the beach. Like Blind Pass Beach, you'll also find no lifeguard at this beach. So here the sand is similar to the first two beaches that we visited today but the beach is wide and the parking lot is small compared to the first two beaches. So that means there's plenty of room to spread out. Unlike our first two stops, we didn't have to walk far at all to find wide open spaces on this beach. 
So compared to our day yesterday on Don Pedro Island, this day has been super chill. Even though our first two beach stops have been pretty busy, everyone seems to be on island time and the day's been really relaxing. Now this beach we're at right now is my favorite because there's hardly anyone out here. We would love to spend some more time here, but the sun will be setting soon and we still have one more beach to take you to. When we were leaving the park, we noticed there were a few kayak launch spots. So this would be really easy access to get to the water with your kayak or paddleboard. Our fourth and final beach stop of the day took us a mile back to the north to Inglewood Beach, where we arrived around quarter to eight, just as the sun was beginning to set. And from our research, this is the most popular beach in the area, and we can see why. While the sand here is very similar to the first three beaches, it does seem to be a little bit better maintained. It's a little softer, and we didn't see as much seaweed. We couldn't have been more happy with our decision to end our beach tour at Inglewood Beach, as it was the perfect spot to take in another vivid Florida sunset. Would you spend a day on Minnesota Key? Let us know in the comments. And while you're at it, let us know your favorite of the four beaches as well. While our time on the beach was coming to an end, our day on Minnesota Key still had more to come. Excited to cap off our day with some good food at great prices, we made our way across the street to the White Elephant Pub. We found the White Elephant to have a unique mix of saloon and old Florida beach bar vibes, plus a friendly local crowd, and of course, elephants. We made our way to the back of the bar, which led to an equally unique outdoor area with tiki bar vibes and seating right on the water. And it was here that we found the laid back atmosphere we'd been enjoying all day, plus the pub style food we'd been craving. Our Reuben came loaded with meat and really hit the spot after a long day of beach hopping. We decided to get a little bit adventurous with our side by ordering the potato pancakes, which came with applesauce for dipping. Always eager to try something new, Skylar gave it a try first. And while Skylar's reaction wasn't too inspiring, I decided to give them a try for myself. As expected, the potatoes dipped in applesauce wasn't my favorite, and maybe it's just the Midwest in us, but we both found them to be much better covered in ranch. Last up was the turtle cheesecake, which came covered in chocolate, caramel, and of course, whipped cream. And while there was no doubt that I would enjoy this part of the meal, Skylar also agreed that it was delicious. Want to spend a day on Minnesota's neighbor to the south? Then click on this video next. Thanks for watching.